Hello, and welcome to part one of the lecture on chapter seven, Neoplasias. In this first part, we're going to be covering some general information about the cell cycle so that we can go into more detail about what are the specific problems that lead to neoplasias or overgrowth of cells. So this diagram um, we saw when we were in the genetics chapter. Um, it, it turns out in the cell cycle, um, the cells spend most of their time not dividing. Um, so they're actively dividing during the mitotic phase, but cells spend most of their time in interphase. And specifically, they spend their time in what's known as G1. Um, yeah, I'll tell you. So why it's called G1, it stands for gap. Um, because when this was first described, it looked like there was a gap in the activity of the cell. So what happens during mitosis, you remember the lining up of the chromosomes and then the chromosomes pulling apart. And you can see all of that through the, a light microscope and it's you know, dramatic. Um, and then during S phase over here, it stands for, S is for synthesis and specifically of DNA synthesis. It looked like there was a lot happening in that part of the cell. And so it looked, between those two, between cell division and between when the DNA was being copied, it looked like nothing was happening. Um, so this was called a gap in the activity, the first gap and the second gap. Turns out um, there's lots and lots happening during these so-called gaps. Um, so now we just call them G1 and G2. And cells spend most of their time doing their jobs in G1. They're not dividing. I'm going to show you the same information in two more ways, um, but it is the same information. The cell starts out in G1, spends lots of time doing its job. Then at some point, and this could be in a few hours or in a few years, um, the cell moves into DNA synthesis. That is copying the DNA in preparation for dividing into two separate cells and then go through G2 and then finally go into mitosis and cytokinesis. So that's the, the, the active cell division. Um, so this is the same information here in the middle, shown in a slightly different way um, with less cartoony colors, um, but the same idea. The cells start out in G1, this first gap in activity. Then if the cell receives the, the appropriate signals and the conditions are right, that is there's enough nutrients, there's enough space, then the cell moves on uh, to copy its DNA. And why, you know, why do you stop yourself from copying DNA? Because it's really expensive. Um, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of raw materials to copy the DNA. And so if you don't need to, because you're not gonna divide, then don't do it. Um, so the cell moves on, copies the DNA, and then some other things have to get lined up um, before the cell allows itself to move into mitosis and the chromosomes divide and so on. And then at the end of this cycle, a single cell has become two cells. And then two cells become four cells and then eight cells and then 16. And so each time a cell goes around the cell cycle, we're doubling the number of cells we have. Same information in a third way, third diagram, but this third diagram adds in some of the controls that keep the cell from cycling out of control. So again, we start out with G1. The cell motors along in G1. Many cells stay in G1 for years. In fact, some cells are permanently in this phase. It's, some, it's sometimes referred to as G0 or G0. Um, examples of cells like this, when, once we're done growing, um, our neurons go into G0. Um, our cardiac muscle cells go into G0. This is why uh, heart attacks are so devastating and why brain damage is so devastating and spinal cord injuries are so devastating. Those cells do not have the capacity to copy their DNA and then reproduce. They, they can't fix themselves. And so that's why, you know, having heart attack or having stroke, those can be devastating um, accidents. You, you can't recover from them sometimes. Okay, so going back, um, we have checkpoint 
proteins, um, one way of thinking about this is the cell has to have a whole bunch of conditions met before it allows itself to move forward. And so there's a, a whole lot of different proteins that are involved in these so-called checkpoints. This is the most significant one of the checkpoints, the G1 checkpoint. It keeps the cell from advancing into copying its DNA, because this is the really expensive thing to do. And we'll talk about some of the proteins involved. Um, but there are other checkpoints. There's another one here. Now, the checkpoints check for different things. So if there's a, a misfiring on one of the checkpoints, it's not like it's gonna get caught at the next checkpoint. It, it, again, it's checking for a different thing. Um, okay. We're gonna talk about um, this with an analogy of a vehicle going around a cycle, going around a track. Um, the cell is the vehicle and the cell can accelerate. It can push itself through this cell cycle and the, the, the cell can slow down, uh, keep itself from going through the cycle. The difference between a cell just doing a lap and doing a lap again is every time the cell does a lap, it becomes two cells. So one car becomes two cars, two cars become four cars and so on. And so there is some utility to slowing down the cell cycle and not letting it go racing out of control. As we mentioned, there's a number of proteins for controlling the cell cycle. Some of the proteins act as accelerators, encourage the cell to, to move forward in the cell cycle. Others, other proteins act as brakes. They slow down the cell cycle, keep division from happening, keep the cell from uh, reproducing. Now, as you know, every protein is coded for by a gene. So there's DNA that has the instructions for making these proteins. If we get a mutation in one of those genes, it may cause the resulting protein to not be shaped right. And that protein then behaves incorrectly. When we have a cell that starts copying itself and copying itself and copying itself, you can be sure that we have mutations in some of these genes. Usually it takes more than a single mutation before we develop an actual cancer. And what we mean by cancer, it's a disorder of unregulated cell proliferation, which is a fancy way of saying cells going around the cycle really fast, making lots and lots of copies of themselves. Uh, this is, I know a cartoon, it's very simple, but I love that it, it, it just strips it down to the most basic information. So a normal cell has some chromosomes. In our case, we've got 46 chromosomes. And every time the cell goes through the cell cycle, it has to copy these chromosomes. And so the cell can reproduce and make lots and lots of copies. If it makes a mistake in the copying of the DNA, um, if the DNA gets damaged at some point and then it doesn't get repaired properly, we have what's known as a mutation. So that's a mistake. We have proteins that help us to edit our DNA to fix mistakes, but some mistakes get through. And once we have a mistake established in the DNA, it is there for the rest of the time of this cell and the de descendants of this cell. Um, and so this, this cell, this first mutation, it can arise in a cell. And then that same mutation gets copied and copied and copied down the line. Um, so years can pass between this first mutation and the development of a second mutation. And the cells, what's being represented down here is the cells are just getting a little bit weirder. You know, they're not quite the way they used to be. Um, but again, that years can pass and nothing happens. Um, but then we accumulate a third mutation and these build on each other. Um, and as we'll see, these are mutations that are happening in specific genes that have specific consequences. And it usually takes a whole lot of different mutations and a whole lot of different genes um, 
to get to the point where we have what to refer to as a malignant cell. That is a, a cell that is gonna be just copying itself and copying itself. It has lost the differentiation. It's no longer doing the, the job that it's supposed to do, either the job as a liver cell or the job as a lung cell. Um, it's just not doing its job anymore. It's just about making copies of itself. Um, as I mentioned repeatedly, these mutations have to accumulate. This is one of the reasons that we tend to see cancers later in life rather than sooner in life. When cancers develop earlier in life, it's typically because the child is born with one of these mutations already. You can think of it as like having a head start on developing a cancer. And we'll come back to this idea of having multi-step uh, development of cancer, have accumulating multiple mutations. Okay, so going back to our vehicle analogy, we're gonna talk about accelerators, things that are gonna make the cell cycle go faster. We'll talk about brakes, things that are gonna slow down the cell cycle. Maintenance mechanics. So accelerators and brakes are not simple things. They have multiple parts to them. A bunch of different things have to be working properly in order for them to work properly. And um, the mechanics maintain all of those different parts, right? Um, so if there's a mistake with some of them, you've got to fix that. The ultimate problem that we're trying to avoid um, is wildly speeding vehicle. And again, that means um, a, set, a cell that's just uh, whipping through the cell cycle and making more and more copies of itself. So specifically, uh, when we talk about accelerators, what we mean are any genes that are involved in stimulating the cell cycle, making the cell cycle go faster. And breaks can be any genes involved in slowing or regulating the cell cycle. Maintenance mechanics would be genes that code for proteins that fix DNA typos, that fix uh, mutations, that fix mistakes. And as we've said, this ultimate problem of the wildly speeding vehicle is this is what we mean by cancerous cells. They're cells that are just whipping through the cell cycle. And every time they finish a lap, you've got double the number of cells that you started with. This is the cycle. Um, cells going through, um, they're accelerating through the cell cycle. If the checkpoint proteins, the genes, it's going to slow things down. If these are defective somewhere, um, then the cell moves through the cycle faster and makes more copies of itself. And that's what we call cancer. I need to introduce some terminology here. So let's talk about uh, some of the genes involved that are accelerators. When the gene is working properly, it's referred to as a proto-oncogene. I know that's not a great term, but that's what it's called. Um, so th think of these as properly working accelerators. So the thing that, that are going to advance the cell through the cell cycle at the appropriate time. Sometimes these proto-oncogenes get mutated in a way where they are inappropriately advancing the cell through the cell cycle. When that happens, we call that an oncogene or an activated oncogene. Um, it's overactive. You can think of this as a stuck accelerator. You know, you put the foot down on the pedal and it, you left off, you know, took the foot off the pedal and the car is still, still accelerating. That's an oncogene. Then the things that kind of slow down the cell cycle, those are referred to as tumor suppressor genes. And there are many tumor suppressor genes and lots of different kinds of tumor suppressor genes, things that are gonna slow us down, things that are going to, oh, here's the other thing. So maintenance mechanics that fix the things that go wrong, those are also referred to as tumor suppressor genes. So lot, that's what I mean by lots of different kinds of tumor suppressor genes, lots of proteins involved in regulating things. I'm gonna use all those terms again on this slide. Uh, so proto-oncogenes, um, 
these are the accelerators. So they code for proteins that are needed for rapid growth and development. A lot of these are generally turned off after childhood. We still have the, the genetic information for it, but we don't express it all the time because we've reached full, full growth, you know, full size. Um, we don't need to keep uh, making copies of all of our cells. But uh, some of those genes can get mutated and that allows reactivation of some of these proto-oncogenes. If they get reactivated, we call them oncogenes. So that's the stuck accelerator. These are proteins that are gonna promote repeated cycles of cell division. So going around that track, making more and more copies. And the, they're gonna ignore the, the, the signals that say, stop copying, we, we have enough cells here. So they, they escape normal growth limitations. And, and what we mean by that are things like constrained space. So think about this, if you cut yourself, um, uh, your patient has an injury, has a wound, has an incision, um, there is healing that happens. The cells are supposed to turn on the copy themselves uh, signal. Um, but once the hole is filled in, that's supposed to stop. And that's what I mean by um, growth limitations. So constrained space, okay, we filled in the hole, but the cells keep dividing having lack of nutrients should be another signal that should keep the cell from dividing and oncogenes stuck in the on position, just gonna keep going, keep going. Uh, lack of growth factors not receiving the signal to copy, they still copy themselves. Okay, now the other side of things, the breaks, the tumor suppressor genes. These code for proteins that can stop the cell cycle, that can keep the cell from advancing even in the presence of the accelerator signals. Uh, other things, um, we have tumor suppressor genes that tell our cells to stop copying themselves if they detect that there's something wrong with the DNA. There's you know, some other pathology, something, something's not right with the cell, it's supposed to stop, it's not supposed to copy itself. And if those tumor suppressor genes are defective, then they don't stop the cell copying itself. All right, so we're gonna put on the same slide, we're gonna put oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. So over on the left, we have um, the cell cycle overstimulated. We have the accelerators going. Uh, these proteins get overexpressed. You make too much of these proteins. Um, these are what we call the oncogenes. On the other side of things, we have the, um, the proteins that are supposed to inhibit cell growth, keep the cell from making a copy of itself. Those proteins are either absent or malfunctioning. Those are the tumor suppressor genes. The end result of both of them is increased cell division. So we need both the signal to over uh, copy and we need an absence of tumor suppressor proteins keeping things from copying too much. And if you have both of those things happening, that's where you get tumor growth. You get cells that are just copying and copying and copying themselves. And that is what we call a tumor. It's just a pile of cells that have continued copying themselves. All right, now to understand the kinds of mutations that can lead to this, um, I need to tell you a little bit more about signaling. Previously, when we talked about cell physiology, we talked about uh, cells sending signals to other cells, like histamine, um, angiotensin, you know, these are signals that are out in the bloodstream. Now what we're talking about, the signal transduction, that means signal, signaling within the cell, uh, passing a message from one molecule to another inside the cell. So at the bottom of this diagram, we're gonna be making a protein that stimulates cell division. It's gonna cause the cell to make copies of itself. This is a, a one kind of accelerator, but it takes many steps to get here to make this accelerator. 
each one of those steps can act like an accelerator itself. And I'll, I'll give you a very specific example. So let's walk through this a little bit. Um, here on the outside, we have this uh, phospholipid bilayer. You'll remember there are receptors embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. They, they're ready to receive signals. The signal that's coming in is a growth factor. Think uh, growth hormone. The signal says, I need you to make copies of yourself. I need you to grow. That signal um, matches with the receptor that's shaped just right to receive that signal. That receptor activates a protein that's inside the cell. This protein, a very inelegant name, it's RAS, R-A-S, lowercase r-a-s. It's a RAS gene. Um, sorry, it's the protein that's that's coded for by the RAS gene. Um, and then when it gets activated, it in turn activates the next protein in this relay or cascade. And we're not gonna go into a lot of detail about this, but just trust me on this. There's a number of proteins inside the cell that need to activate each other until finally, the final step here is to activate something that goes into the nucleus and actually gets a, a particular gene transcribed and then translated, and then finally we have this protein. We'll re reveal that later we'll see uh, some of these proteins are things called cyclins, and they're things that stimulate cell division. Well, it's very common to find in cancer cells that the RAS gene has mutated. And so the protein that results here does not wait for the signal from the receptor it's just on all the time. So it's hyperactive uh, relay protein. It's a, a product of the RAS oncogene. So this thing is always on, and even if there's no growth factor. This thing is always saying, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, go. Make more, make more, make more of the cyclin protein. Tell the cell to divide. That is an accelerator. That is a, an oncogene. I'm going to give you the same information in a slightly different diagram. Here, um, the cell is represented by the big rectangle. Here's the phospholipid bilayer with the receptor in place. Here's the signal, the growth factor arriving. Once the growth factor arrives, what's supposed to happen is the receptor activates the RAS protein. And then RAS protein kicks off this cascade, the protein kinases. Um, they, these proteins activate each other until finally the final step go into the nucleus, transcribe that gene, then come out and translate it and we get that protein that stimulates the cell cycle. That's the way it's supposed to work. But in the case of the mutated RAS, it's active. It's sending the signal, go ahead and make that protein, but check it out. Out here, we have no signal. There is no growth factor coming in. That's what I mean by a cell kind of it, having the accelerator stuck. It's just saying copy, copy, copy. It's sending out and making lots and lots of this protein that's telling the cell to make copies of itself. Now let's take a look at what happens with um, the, the breaks. We also have tr uh, signal transduction for the breaks. So the same principle can apply here um, each, uh, each step is susceptible to malfunction. And the, the particular case we're going to look at is a mutation in what's known as a P53 gene. Again, the names are not awesome, but that's what they're called. It's like saying I-10 or I-25. It's just the name of the highway. It's not super important where the number came from, um, but that's the name of it. So P for protein and 53 because of how much it weighs. Um, so P53, gene, this P53 gene and the protein that it makes, super important. There's like 500 other genes that get controlled by this thing. So when there's a mutation in this gene, oh my gosh, it's devastating. It's really, really bad. Um, so here's an example. Uh, the thing that triggers uh, P53 to get activated is damage to the DNA 
And that can happen, say, exposure to UV radiation. If you're out in the sun, you get a sunburn, um, some of the DNA gets damaged. That's supposed to trigger this cascade that protein kinases specific to this uh, protein. It activates uh, P53. P53 is supposed to go into the, the nucleus and do something. It slows the cell cycle. Let's fix this mess before we make copies of ourselves. Well, if there's a mistake, if there's a, a mutation in the P53 gene, you got the same trigger, the UV damage uh, to the DNA, that the cascade got triggered, but now your P53 is non-functional. It's not going to inhibit the cell cycle. Um, and so we have moving through um, the uh, uh, cell cycle that's not being slowed down. Well, my kid just left for school, so <laughs> that's what you just saw. Uh, let's see. And now let's get back to that idea about the multi-step uh, model of cancer development. Um, remember accumulation of multiple uh, mutations. So multiple genetic changes in the DNA have to occur uh, before a cell becomes fully cancerous. Uh, the general rule is this. Um, the mutations usually include at least one active oncogene and mutations in several of the tumor suppressor genes. So in this case, what we're going to look at, there's going to be a mutation of the RAS gene. Uh, when it's working right, it's a proto-oncogene. And then when it gets mutated, it's, a, it's, an, it's an oncogene. And then for the tumor suppressor side, there is going to be a mutation of P53, but then there's a bunch of other tumor suppressor genes that I'm going to mention in passing, um, and they all have to get mutated before we can have completely out of control cell growth. So here we go. This dude um, has some healthy colon tissue epithelial cells in the colon. Everything's fine, but he gets a mutation in one of the genes. Um, in this case, it's a loss of one of the tumor suppressor genes. APC or some other tumor suppressor gene. And that gene that's no longer doing its job, that's no longer suppressing the cell cycle, that's going to allow some more copying than usual. And so we get a little pile of cells. Uh, it's a small growth. It's benign, meaning it's not ready to spread anywhere, but it looks like something. There's a little pile of cells here, it's a polyp. And months can pass, years can pass, and that's all that we get is this little polyp. But then let's say we get a second mutation in one of these important genes. In the RAS oncogene, we've now activated the go, go, go signal. It's not all the cells in this pile, it could be just one, but that's all it takes is one cell making lots and lots of copies of itself. And that little pile of cells becomes a bigger pile of cells. Again, months can pass, maybe years, and we get another mutation. And now we lose a different tumor suppressor gene. And so that cell that now has these three mutations in it, that cell is making more and more and more copies of itself. And each time it's dividing, you've got two and then you've got four and then you've got eight and so on. And then finally, um, we get a mutation in that super important P53 and this growth takes off because we've got the go signal going like crazy. And then all the stop signals have been pulled away. They're not working. And that is what we say, we have a malignant tumor. We have something that's gonna be growing out of control and can spread from here. Okay, now I know that that's a lot of detail and I know we're not cancer researchers. Why does this matter? And the reason why it matters is this. If we can identify the underlying cause of the overgrowth of the cells, this allows for more targeted treatment of this specific cancer. The old treatments um, of cancer, they're nonspecific. They, they just act on any cell that's actively dividing. And so it's going to affect many 
healthy cells, having lots of side effects. For example, um, remember back when you learned about mitosis and the chromosomes all lining up? Do you remember how there were these spindle fibers, these proteins that kind of reached out and kind of lined the chromosomes up down the middle of the cell? Okay, some of the old cancer treatments target that. So any cell, not just cancer cells, but any cells that are actively dividing get killed by those drugs. Imagine how devastating that is on a pediatric patient. Their, their growth is being stunted. Um, this is one of the reasons why we get the side effect of losing hair. Hair is not alive, but the cells that give rise to hair are alive and they're actively dividing. And so these kinds of treatments will affect that kind of growth. Okay, so the newer treatments, they're more specifically targeted at exactly what's wrong with the mutated cells. And that helps to avoid damaging healthy cells. And so those treatments are the ones that tend to have fewer side effects. And that is our goal for our patients. That is the end of part one of our lecture. So I will stop here and see you in part two.